Good afternoon. We welcome staff, students and parents, family members, community members, veterans and friends. Today here at Berlin Elementary School, we wish to honor those who have served and fallen for our country. Today we honor Memorial Day. Memorial Day, which is observed next Monday, started as an event to honor Union soldiers who had died during the American Civil War. It was inspired by the way people in southern states honored their dead. After World War I, it was extended to include all men and women who died in any war or military action. Memorial Day was originally known as Decoration Day. The current name for this day did not come into use until after World War II. Decoration Day, and now Memorial Day, used to be held on May 30th, regardless of the day of the week on which it fell. In 1968, the Uniform Holidays Bill was passed as part of a move to use federal holidays to create three-day weekends. This meant that from 1971, Memorial Day holiday has officially been observed on the last Monday in May. For many of you, this upcoming three-day weekend marks the start of summer. A long weekend of fun and adventure. However, Memorial Day must be recognized and not taken for granted. Our ceremony today here at Berlin Elementary School is not a celebration. It is a solemn occasion for silently reflecting and honoring those brave men and women who have died for our country. Today you will hear, today you will hear songs and poems from students. When they are finished, we ask that you remain silent. Please do not clap. Please do not cheer. We ask instead that you think. Listen to the words and remember. At this time, we're going to ask everybody to please stand as Barry, VFW Post 790 will present the colors. I'm going to ask, ask first and second graders to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. time, Ms. Janice Hood is going to come up and we're going to sing with kindergarten, first, and second graders, hats off. Kindergarten, first, and second graders, please stand. Our first readers are Kylie Reynolds, Cormac Farrell, Zoe Hayes, 
Saint Flag Song Fall by Nancy Bird Turner. Look up, there's our flag, we can count every star, and the red, blue, and light, how lovely they are. Floating high, floating wide, we can see it from far. Our flag, it's the flag, we can count every star. And the sun and the wind do its bright colors shine. I look at the flag, it is yours, it is mine. We'll now hear from Ariana Conti, Emery Sands, Alvin Winters, and Christian McForest, being a time to remember, and Henry Holcomb Bennett. Memorial Day is a time to remember, to honor and show our respect. For all men and women who gave their lives to the country they fought to protect. Although we cannot picture all their faces, nor recognize each person's name, we give thanks today for those brave soldiers when thought fought by our country they came. We will now hear from fourth graders Emily Cloud, Sophie Young, and Jesse Batdorf saying American Flag by Aaron Ryan. Red, white, and 13 stripes remind us of their past. The colonies so long ago, some thought they'd never last. And the stars, although they've changed, for states both old and new, on a field of blue, they're 50 strong, a home for me and you. So wave your flag and show your pride and never let it fall. And remember why we pledge each day with liberty and justice for all. At this time, third and fourth graders will be singing America the Beautiful, accompanied by Janice. So third and fourth graders, please stand. Lily Kilburn, the Peters Ashley Michael, John Stafford, reading Unknown Soldiers by Roger Obershot. You need not ever know my name. This unknown soldier seeks no fame. I am here to bring out thought from you. May your heart see more than your view. America, we march with pride, we gave our lives. For you we died. How well we knew that time might come when life could sound that final drum. Please think of us as life moves on. We try so hard to that last dawn. Do let our spirit fill the land, past treasure of freedom, hand by hand. God bless this country with such love. Hold in your heart abundance of. And when you stand before my grave, think of not one, but each who gave. Now here from fifth graders, Warren Winters, Aidan McAllister, Adam Farrell, reciting In Flanders Field by John McRae. 
In Flanders' fields the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt on, so since they glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. A torch for yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. We will now hear from sixth graders, Emily Norsha, Kenneth Brousseau, Lydia Haggett, and Melissa Frazier reading Freedom is Not Free by Kelly Strong. I saw the flag pass by one day. It fluttered in the breeze. A young Marine saluted it, and then he stood at ease. I looked at him in uniform, so young, so tall, so proud, with hair cut square and eyes alert, he'd stand out in any crowd. I wondered how many men like him had fallen through the years, how many died on foreign soil, how many mothers' tears, how many planes had been shot down, how many died at sea, how many foxholes were soldiers' graves. No, freedom is not free. I heard the sounds of taps one night when everything was still. I listened to the bugler play, I felt a sudden chill. I wondered just how many times the taps had meant amen when a flag had draped the coffin of a brother or a friend. I thought of all the children, of the mothers and the wives, of fathers, sons, and husbands with interrupted lives. I thought about a graveyard at the bottom of the sea, of unmarked graves in Arlington. No, freedom is not free. At this time, fifth and sixth graders, please stand. They will be singing, This Land is Your Land, accompanied by Mrs. Clear. Fifth and sixth graders, can you turn and face our guests?
and fifth and sixth graders. At this time, we'll hear from sixth grader Grace Eggerstead reading the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation so conceived or so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot consecrate, we cannot dedicate, we cannot follow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggle here are consecrated. Far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will never know, nor will we remember what, what we sing here, but it can never forget what they did. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have us are so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these all are dead, we take increased devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Please stand. As our very DFW Post 790 retire the colors. 